Hey guys, Andrew here from SEMA Labs, and today I want to discuss iOS 11 beta to take a look at the new features from a developer's perspective, find out what excites you guys, and if you haven't seen it yet, just to go over them with you. So let's get straight into it. The first feature I'm excited about is the screen recording functionality, which unfortunately has been quite buggy for me so far, so I hope Apple fix these issues, which I'll discuss. I'll quickly discuss why I am excited about it and that screen recording can be accessed through a control center for those who don't know just on the screenshot here so back to why I am excited about it historically when I've wanted to record an iPhone or iPad screen I've had three options first option is the free option which is I plug in my iPad or iPhone into my Mac and you can use QuickTime to record the screen. This process isn't very intuitive if you've ever done it before. It kind of looks like it's not working when it actually is, so it's quite confusing. Which leads me on to the second option. There's third party apps out there such as Duet, I believe, and other ones. Now, last time I used them was about three years ago. I used a trial to see how it worked. And it had similar functionality. You could plug in your iPad or iPhone into your MacBook. The user interface was a lot more friendlier than QuickTime. And you could also do screen recording wirelessly. However, the problem at the time when I used it is it would save it to your computer over the wireless network. So if your wireless network wasn't that great or you had dropouts and so on, it could lag and not save the file correctly, so I had issues there and stopped using it. The third option I have for recording screen is what I actually use for creating YouTube tutorials, and that is a program called ScreenFlow. So that can record your MacBook screen, record your MacBook camera, record audio, and also if you plug in an iPhone or iPad, it can record the screen from that, and it does need to be plugged directly into your MacBook. So I'm excited about this recording function because you can record natively straight to your iPad or iPhone, save the file there. And this excites me because a lot of the times I need to record a demo of my app because I work in iOS development as well and either send it to a client or even just recording it for my YouTube channel for you guys. Now, I have had two problems with this screen recording functionality. The first one is, is recording at the moment here, but if I swipe up from the bottom of the screen to show the control center, it actually cancels the whole recording. It doesn't even save it. The top bar recording just simply disappears. So I'm hoping this is a bug. I'm going to raise the issue of Apple because it just makes no sense to me why swiping up the control center would just cancel out your recording and delete it. So we'll see how that goes. This is actually the fourth recording of this video because of this issue and I didn't know what was happening why my recordings would fail when it turns out simply opening the control center caused them to cancel. This brings me on to the next issue which has only happened once so far when I was using the iPad I tapped on the screen the recording completely cancelled out and didn't save so because it's new functionality and in beta understandably there are going to be bugs so we'll see how this is when the full version of iOS 11 is released. So that's pretty exciting. So once again, to access that in the control center, there's simply a screen recording button now in iOS 11. Now, let's go on to the next feature I'm excited about, which is the control center. You can now customize the control center from the settings as follows, go settings, Control center, where are you? Here we are. And you can add in more controls, such as a shortcut to the alarm, shortcut to opening the notes app, a shortcut to the timer, and so on. You're probably thinking, Andrew, why are you excited about this functionality? And the reason is, in the screenshot here of the control center, you can adjust the volume now on the same screen as the brightness by sliding up and down. What I'm excited about is I'm hoping not only Apple allow us to place our own apps as shortcuts in the control center, but we can also add controls such as toggles for the flashlight, 
the adjusting for the volume and so on. So just some examples of what you could do. If you had a light or lamp which could control your brightness, you could make an app whereby in the control center, you can adjust the brightness of that light. And say, for example, if you owned a Tesla, you could have a toggle like a flashlight to remotely start it. This will come in great on a winter morning whereby it's absolutely freezing inside, you're in bed and you want to go out for a drive. So you start your car remotely, start up the heaters, you can go straight into your car into a warm environment. Now the next thing which is really cool but has disappointed me so far is they've announced a native files app here which is here to manage your files. As you can see, I've got the iCloud Drive open at the moment. If we go into Documents, we've got some zip files I downloaded from my website to see how the app actually worked. And they would always download to my iCloud Drive. So if we go back here, you can see there's a location on my iPad and I have not been able for the life of me to save a file to my iPad, which is one of what I want to do. Like, what if you're out for a drive, you don't have reception? What if you're flying on a plane? You don't have access to iCloud if you don't have an internet connection. So why can't I simply save the files to my iPad and why are they going to the iCloud? I have no idea. Hopefully it's just either I'm using it incorrectly, which so far I can't find a way to simply save a file to my iPad. So it looks like maybe this is the way Apple's decided to implement it. So I hope they change their mind and allow you to put files more easily onto your iPad. But I think this is a really cool feature to have natively, so you can download files, share them between applications, and I'm hoping at some point you can plug it into your computer and load files onto there. Maybe that's the way the functionality works for having files on your iPad, is you download it straight to your computer, connect it to your computer and download a file from your computer straight to your iPad and maybe you can share a file back that way. If someone's played around with it more, maybe they can let me know in the comments below. But so far, it looks good. It's a start, but I think they can improve on it a lot. And another feature that ties in really cool with a screen recording is if we take a screenshot here, we can see in the bottom right hand corner, it's going to show our screenshots. And if we tap on that, we can actually annotate those screenshots. So we can highlight air, draw lines, and let's find a highlighter. We can highlight areas like follows in yellow, highlight some text, highlight Spotify text, the settings text, the iBooks text. And this is really cool because if you want to take a screenshot of an app, you can point out something without photo editing software. So we can go done, save that to the photos. Now, if we go back into photos, we can actually edit any photo like that. So let's go to this album here and let's edit this. So if we go to the edit options here, we'll see three dots. We can open it up in markup where we can mark up this image. So let's draw some blue on the image. So blue lines, a little smiley face here and we'll go done. Now, what if you edit the image and you realize you made a horrible mistake? How are you going to undo this work? It's quite simple. If we go back into markup, you can actually get the eraser and erase everything you've done. So you're not going to lose your original images if you use markup on them, which is awesome. I think this is going to be a great feature for people to take screenshots, point out stuff in apps and so on. Another feature which is cool, if we go to the settings app, let's go to general and accessibility. And under vision, we have an option which is display accommodations and we can invert the colors. So you can see two options here. There's a smart invert and a classic invert. Before iOS 11, we could only use a classic invert which straight up inverted colors. Now some people who had couldn't see properly, had vision impairments would use this to better be able to look at their iPad or iPhone. 
and some people will use it as a dark mode to lessen the strain on their eyes. So I'm going to put up a screenshot of the classic invert now. Now let's turn on a smart invert and compare them side by side. We can see the smart invert, it looks a lot cleaner, the icons pop a lot more, it just looks a lot more beautiful, like it's user friendly, like just straight up inverting colours never looks that great. So now if we go to some apps such as Notes, you can see the colours are inverted here. Let's go to another app, we'll just find one here, say Snapchat. You can see the colours are inverted. If we go to Spotify, an app which is dark by default, you'll see the app go straight back to white. So I think there is still some work to be done around here. Whether it be apps can detect if this invert mode is on and then leave the dark theme on. Or Apple has some way to detect apps that already have a dark colour. But then that brings up the argument, what if you have a dark app and you want to invert the colours of that setting? So we'll see how that goes. And finally to finish off, we'll look at a few more quick features in iOS 11. The first one is in the bottom right. You notice there's an area for app icons now. It's like a smart system where it detects the previous apps you've used and the ones that you've had open the most. I think this is great because on my iPhone personally, I only know what apps are on the home screen. Everything else, I always swipe for Spotlight and search for the app. So if I'm going through a few apps that I don't use that much, but I don't know where they are. It's great to have them on the dock so I can switch between them quickly. So I don't either have to go to the app switcher or search for them through Spotlight. And we'll top it off with a final feature, which is really cool back in the Photos app. Let's take a look at this GIF. As you can see, it's animating, which is awesome. The Photos app hasn't supported GIF files before, so you can natively view GIFs on your iPhone or iPad, which is really cool. So that's it for my point of view. I've had a quick overview. I've played around, but probably for a few hours so far. So let me know what your thoughts are. Do you agree with me in some features I'm excited about? Do you have other features you're excited about? Let me know in the comments below.